What's going on guys, it's Brett Gibbs here. Um, I'm the current 83kg world champion. Uh, my current best lift uh, for the deadlift is 705 pounds or 320 kilos. That's in competition. We use an Alico, we use a stiff bar, we use thin Alico plates. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some of the tips, some of the techniques that I use um, that I incorporate into my client's training, my own training, and that's taken my deadlift from you know, below 400 pounds, right up to 700 pounds, at a body weight of 183 or 83 kilo. So let's take a look at the deadlift. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at or talk about is a bit of a mistake that we see is people approaching the bar different uh, each and every time they actually go to deadlift. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we have a routine that we're comfortable with. So the first thing we're gonna do obviously is we're gonna walk up, we're gonna approach the bar and place our feet in a position ready to actually pull that bar up to lockout, okay? So, what I do personally, is I, I put my left foot forward every single time, okay? And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking to get the bar over, the, over mid foot, okay? And I'm not, not actually putting my shin right up to the bar. This is another mistake uh, that I see people make. Sometimes it may not be a mistake, but I've come across times where I'm lifting on a platform that it's actually very hard for me if I have my shin against the bar, I need to go down and get the bar. It actually requires energy and I have to move, uh, move differently to get down to the bar because it's hard for me to actually push this bar. You'll see on today's platform, this is very easy. It's, it's only really just, just sitting on here, but sometimes you're gonna be lifting on softer surfaces like carpets. And the reason I wanna do this is I wanna take out any variation I can. You know, practicing, uh, practice makes perfect, but only if that practice is done perfectly. Okay, so again, building routine, left foot forward, mid foot. So I'm allowing for any, any knee travel, any, any forward shin, shin travel when I go down to get the bar because I want that to be stationary uh, before I take the pull on, okay? So if you take this view right over the center of the foot, yep. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna bring my, my right foot forward, I'm actually just gonna slightly rotate this knee out, okay? You'll just see just a slight change in position here. This is getting that, this my left glute fired, okay? This is almost contracting this left glute before I bring it forward. And this is the position I want my knees to stay in. I don't want to keep it forward and think about pushing right forward like this. It's almost going to be thinking about a vertical shin position. Almost a bit like the squat when we think about, you know, we need to move our hips in a downward position, okay? We want to keep our back neutral. So I need to create some space in that socket so I can actually keep that spine uh, nice and neutral when I go down to grab the bar, okay? So I'm happy with that, I'm nice and even, I'm nice and over the bar, okay? Knees are ever so slightly coming out, you're gonna see a change here, okay? Just like I talked about before, that's for my spinal position, my hip position, okay? Now the next thing I wanna think about is, you know, where do I wanna initiate the pull from? So everyone's always thinking about, you know, their shoulder position, their hip position, uh, my, are my hips too high? Are my hips too low? It's really gonna be a lot different for everyone and sort of what feels comfortable, but at the end of the day, the bar's not gonna move until the scapula is really over, over the bar. The bar's gonna be in the best position when it's over mid foot, okay? So that's the next thing we're gonna think about. Okay, so again. Now the first thing I'm doing from here is I'm really, I think about hinging at the hips or pushing these hips back and I'm really loading the glutes, loading the hammy, so that, that muscle's gonna lengthen, so you're gonna feel a bit of a pull through there. So it's just this position here, I'm getting right over the bar, so when I think about my upper body, I'm not thinking about trying to keep a big chest, anything like this. This is a mistake we see. It's forward and over the bar. So these hips back. Now the best way to sort of think about that cue or, or practice that sort of motion, um, you can have a resistance pulling you back, so getting a band maybe around the groin, having that come from behind, and that's gonna sort of pull you back. And you wanna think about getting, getting uh, tension through the hamstring um, and loading the glutes when you're bringing them back through just like lockout. So there's this sort of movement here, or from the side. Imagine if I had a band coming from back here and back through. And that, that's, that whole time you're gonna think about your spinal position too. Don't get lazy with that, don't just think, and just start folding over to grab the ground. You've got to keep that, that back nice and neutral. Okay, very, very important. And I was saying before, the best movement for, the, for practicing that technique 
is anything like a bent over row or a stiff legged deadlift. Those will be the two best things to think about loading that position there and maintaining tightness. Okay. So let's think about our hand position, our feet position. Now a lot of the time the foot position is going to be what works best for you. Um, but me personally, I like, I like to be very, very straightforward. So um, standing just that shoulder width, feet very straightforward. A lot of the times you'll see people get in a position where it's like they're, they want to do like a broad jump. That's where they feel most powerful. So you might have your feet just slightly twisted out. Now again, that's going to be personal preference for you. I like to go straight forward because I feel like it involves my quads a lot more at the bottom of the movement. And it just feels like a strong position for me, okay? So the next thing we're going to think about is bar, hand position on the bar, okay? Now obviously it makes the most sense to have your hand straight up and down, mixed grip, double overhand, uh, hook grip. Okay, that's going to be whatever your preference is, whatever works best for you. Now if I could go back in time to when I first started deadlifting, I would have gone double overhand or hook grip. Um, just for uh, shoulder maintenance would be a lot easier, a lot better. Um, you know, we'd look at our lats, they're taking a lot of the load, the biceps. Um, that would be the most ideal, but unfortunately a lot of people, you know, they start mixed grip and they sort of uh, just sort of roll with that as we progress. Okay, now straight up and down is obviously going to be the most ideal uh, grip because that's going to be the shortest range of motion, okay? If we think about moving the bar up here or moving our hands out, the bar is going to get higher and higher off the ground. Okay, so we want to keep it as low, as the ground to we, uh, low to the ground as we can uh, for the most efficient movement. So we're not, we're not just jerking our back into a big flex position, so when we look at that, I'm just talking about sort of like a completely rounded back, anything like this. That's really just going to target one, one sort of part of the spine, it's going to really load that up. Um, you're going to find it a lot harder to recover from that sort of position if you're deadlifting constantly like that. Um, that's something you'll see in a lot of beginner lifters, that they don't take the time to really learn the movement or not really know what body the, uh, position their body is in. Okay, that bleeds over to workout after workout after workout and then they eventually have to take a month or so off because you know their lower back or their mid back has just be become so sore and they get really like the most common one you'll see is really lumbar dominant you know you'd see um, someone with a weak upper back they don't have a lot of trap engagement mid lower trap um, engagement their lats aren't that great but their, their lower back their erectors are really really well developed now that's a that's a good sign that they're very very dominant through that position that they sort of just jerk the bar off the ground they're not engaging their glutes enough um, so that's that's a key sign to look for um, so we really want to try and, and rule that out and get into a better position as early as we can and train in that position um, so we can get stronger over time it takes a long time to get strong so we need to be doing it for a long time and to do things for a long time especially when we're lifting weights you need to be healthy so one little cue i'm going to think about here is when i now grab the bar like I say, I want to pull myself into the floor and I'm going to ever so slightly think about screwing my lats. So I'm going to screw that bar slightly and you're going to feel the, the change in position with your lats there. Ever so, su ever so subtly that I, I do this now. It's sort of second nature for me now to do this, to sort of cue my lats. But I found when I had to change from being a very lumbar dominant lifter, you know, really, really flex spine, um, ripping it off the ground. Um, I had to really take a step back and really exaggerate that to really, really screw on my elbows, taking my time off the floor, making it more one speed through the range of motion, not just jerking it to my knees and then wondering why a lockout was so hard. Um, and people would always talk about, you know, oh, well, I don't get sore glutes, or oh, I used to never have sore glutes. And people would tell me, oh man, I got sore glutes today after squats and after deadlifts. I never had that, that problem. I'd never be able to engage my glutes like I can now. You know, I can walk away from a deadlift session and actually be, man, my glutes are on fire, or even a squat session, they're on fire. So that's one sign too, if, if you're not engaging your glutes enough, um, you're probably gonna know about it because you're not even really feeling them fire at all. So the, the first part here too, I just wanted, wanted to point out, talk about too, was not thinking about just pushing my knees forward, I'm almost just pushing them out. So like, if, if you were to look at my feet, I'm almost applying pressure this way, where if they were to slide, they'd almost be coming out here like this, okay? Now if you think about doing that, if, if I'm just standing here right now, I'm relaxed, knees are just straight forward, can't feel my glutes at all, but as soon as I screw them out like that, my knees come out, that position we talked about earlier, I can feel my glutes firing here right now, okay? So it's hips back, so I might have a slight bit of rounding in my back, and this is where I'm going to use the bar. And 
and that's when I'm really pulling myself into position. So you might have seen there, you may not have, but just pulling myself into the position with, we've got a 45 on each side here. The bar was coming off the ground already, okay? So that's when I can see, I know that I'm pulling myself in a good position. My spine's getting into a, a, bit, a more neutral position. I had a big pull through my hamstrings, through my glutes there, and that's where I want to pull from. That's where I'm going to find each and every time I want to initiate the pull from that position. Now, when I think about pulling the weight off the floor, I want to think about it as one motion. So I, I imagine that this bar here is completely bolted to the ground, that it's not going to be able to move. So what I think about is pulling myself through the floor, and this just, this just makes me keep keep pulling um, to keep my back as neutral as I can so I don't rush it. I used to um, think about, if I think about lifting the weight like a deadlift, I always just think about just trying to actually pull it up like this. But when I think about actually, you know, trying to keep a better spinal position, load my quads, you know, use some of my strengths, and I think about, you know, pulling myself down through the floor, that, that's the cue that works for me. Then I find that works really well for, you know, people that I pass it on to. I've had great feedback. The next thing I want to think about, or I want to talk about, is the deadlift. Is it a one-part lift or is it a two-part lift? I'm constantly being asked and everyone's being asked, you know, well, I'm so slow off the floor or I, I can, I'm so fast off the floor but I can't lock it out. Um, and, then, and that's all really to do with positioning. You know, people, are, people who struggle for lockout, uh, they generally stop at their knees or like mid-thigh. But then you've got to look at the position their back's in and their hips are in, you know. How are you supposed to bring your glutes through when you're in a position like this? You know, how are you actually supposed to get this through and bring it back up here so I can actually extend at the hips here? So you've got to really look at that, you know, if you're super slow off the floor and, uh, you know, you're just at one constant speed, that's probably how you're going to lift. You might want to work on some, some speed work or maybe even slow it down even more, like, you know, your descent, you know, are you holding it at the top? Just maybe just come down even slower and think about getting to the floor here and then, then go. Or you've got the lifters that are slow at lockout. Look at your position at lockout, you know. Are you in that position I referred to earlier, this, this rounded position here, trying to lock something out here? Take your time off the floor, slow it down off the floor and, and see what happens. You know, you can train at lower loads on the deadlift. That's what people don't, don't look at or they overlook it. They always want to train at higher percentages thinking they, they actually need to lift the most weight, um, when in actual fact I don't believe that that's necessary. One of the biggest changes I made in my deadlift was uh, glute activation. Now the, the biggest, the best thing ever for me was, was this um, in particular. So when I referred to earlier was, you know, thinking about this position here, just coming through. So this is our, essentially our deadlift lockout position, isn't it? Okay, we get to about the knee, just, just below the knee, we want to bring, bring the glutes through, okay? Now, when you're, when you're training the deadlift, you know, especially on the, on the lighter days, the faster days, you really want to exaggerate that lockout. So really, really, boom, bring them through. And when I say, you know, bring them through, here, you should be able to just hit your glutes, be rock hard, you know. You actually really, really over exaggerate squeeze them, okay? Nice and rock hard there. So that's what I want to think about. I don't want to see people, or a big common mistake I see is people coming up through to the top, and over, -exa over exaggerating this lockout. Now you see you've got soft knees here. It's actually hard for you to lo lock your glutes here when you're in this position here. And it compromises that lower back again. So when I think about the deadlift. Good solid lockout. So this position here. So even that there, that's a, that's a great position, that's something you want to learn, is that, that movement there. Okay, you can get it up to your knees very easily, but from there, you'll know if you do that movement by itself, that, that short and range of motion, that you know you have to be in a strong position at that point in the deadlift to get a really smooth lockout like that. Okay, so training the glutes is the number one thing, um, especially for the conventional, you know, if you're really lumbar dominant get that glute involvement, you, you'll notice that it's going to be a one lift, not a two part lift. So one other thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, people often refer to the deadlift as just being absolute savage, just rip it off the ground. You know, just put as, as much effort, as much work, as much intensity into the lift as you can. 
Um, well, for me, I almost had to, I had that mentality to start with, you know, just rip it off the floor, do what you can, lift as much weight as you can all of the time, you know, according to your program type thing. But I've sort of had to almost break it down into like, you know, where's my technical max at, you know, where can I hold good positions? And where do I sort of lose that position and, and how far is that technical max um, going to be behind from my sort of just 100% all out grind type lift. So I was at a, at a time in uh, my lifting career, it'd be a couple of years ago now, where I was, I was deadlifting around 280 kilo. And I was stuck at that for, for a number of months and I was, I was seeing good progression right up into there. Um, and, I, and I had this thing in my head where it was like, every deadlift session that I have, you know, whether it be once or twice a week, the, the least amount of weight I'm gonna move is 220 kilo. So when I did that for a period of time, maybe four, five, six weeks, and I noticed that almost progressively each week it was getting slower and slower. My positioning was poor, uh, my recovery was taking longer and longer. Um, so I had to think about it, you know, I need to strip the weight back. Um, so I, I stripped it back to about 180 kilo and all I did for about five or six weeks, five or six weeks was lift literally just 180 kilo for, you know, sets of five, six, seven, eight, right up to around the 12 rep range. You know, but in better positions, they might have been a little bit slower than I could have if I was just sort of ripping it off the ground. But I took my time, I found a, a better position, reps were moving faster and faster each week. And I, I built up about three weeks after that, you know, I finally went up, I went up to 240 kilo. The next week I went up to 260 kilo. And then the following week I had a new PR of 300 kilo. So I got a new, a new PB by actually scaling the weight back. So training at lower intensities and better positions for the deadlift, I think, especially in the conventional, can have a huge carryover. You don't always have to be lifting maximal. Now, if you want to look at a percentage-based program, maybe base it off a percentage off your technical max. You know, look at look at look at yourself, assess yourself. Say, you know, where is it really starting to break down? I mean, yes, I pulled that weight last week. It didn't look that great. You know, but think about where did it where did it stop to look great? Where did it where did it start to feel bad? Where do you think right? I'm a bit too much out of position here that I'm going to compromise recovery, you know, and even your mental mental game too, you know, you think, well, it looks sloppy, it was a bit slow, I got it, but wouldn't, wouldn't you rather have 10 or 15 kilos off the bar and be like, I nailed that. Look at my spine position, that was so smooth. Lockout was awesome, there's no doubt that was three light whites. So if you can move, move like that, have a mentality like that, it's gonna go a lot further than training with more weight on the bar and trying to be that savage in the gym. So you notice when I'm coming down, my knees aren't just going straight forward like this. Almost like what some you'll see a lot of people doing, they're coming out to the side here. So that's just that's just freeing up some area for my hips to move and keep my back spine in a bit. So let's talk about breathing, so. There's a big difference between doing a single and maybe a set of five, so what I personally like to do is I take my breath at the top, okay, so if I'm standing up against the bar, I'll find my positioning, I'll take my breath here, down into the core, so really squeezing out against my belt, my abdominal wall, not breathing into the chest, remember it's always down here from my neutral spine. Now I find that builds a lot of pressure, you know, when I think about adding pressure here, pushing out against my belt, it's gonna make, make it actually harder for me to find position at the bottom. Now again, when, I, when it's harder to find position because of pressure through my belt, so I have to again manipulate myself even harder, pull myself into the bar even, even more, and that's gonna enable me to lift more weight, okay? So a lot of people that struggle with a belt on, they say, well, you know, I can't find my position as well. It's because they're not used to actually pulling themselves in hard enough um, or, or moving themselves around them, they're letting the belt take control. So the, the, the best thing to do is really find position without the belt to start with if you're struggling with your deadlift technique and add that later on and learn how to pull yourself into the position you want to be in. Don't let that take over. That's it. These are some tips that have helped me out over the years of my lifting career. Um, hope you guys found some, something very insightful into this video. I want to say a big thanks to Omar for the video, for featuring on his channel. It's been an awesome time here in Toronto. And uh, make sure you like that video.
and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!